This is Bob Jones, the amazing career executive coach. I know you guys, you all have been waiting patiently for this fourth podcast. I'm uh, very excited about it. I put uh, the title for it for this week was the 900 pound gorilla in the room, which is LinkedIn.com, a business social networking platform, which basically dominates the professional communities throughout the world, but specifically in the U.S. And uh, it's funny uh, just how people think about it. Um, LinkedIn, I'm probably, uh, I have over 30,000 connections on LinkedIn and uh, a good friend, Patrick Novick and I, when we were young recruiters, when it first became, when it first came live, we competed to get to 500. And then I, um, I ended up beating them, but I ended up keep going and made it to 30,000, the maximum you can have at any one time, unless you're an influencer. And uh, the influencer is when you're, you write a lot of content. I didn't, at the time, I didn't know that's what I needed to do. So, but anyway, um, one of the, my, my main thoughts about LinkedIn is it doesn't take a lot of work to just keep it current and keep it accurate and keep it professional and the difference can be significant when and if you have to find a job. Remember, most people have to find a job, even the best people three, every three to four years. And that time flies by and trying to fix all these things when you're transitioning, let alone the pressure of finding a job is, is can be painful. So it's good to have over 500 contacts in LinkedIn. It's good to be a part of a lot of groups. Doesn't cost you anything to be a part of a lot of groups. I have 70 groups, uh, but you could have 20 or 30. By having groups, you're connected to people and you don't have to use up one of your in-mails if, uh, to get a connection with someone. So it's kind of a specific term, but basically um, you will not have to use up uh, one of the things provided by LinkedIn to connect with someone who's not a direct or a second connection. So uh, one of the other things about LinkedIn is when you're looking for work, I always recommend to sign up for premium. I think it's 59 or 79 a month because it actually makes it so much easier to connect to everybody and you can send a lot more messages out. Um, let's see. I'm going into the topic first today because it's, I talk about it all the time. After I talk about LinkedIn, I'll talk some about some of the people I've talked to this week. By far, and I have a lot of statistics on this. If you're trying to find a job, LinkedIn is one of the best ways. And most people's perception of their professional network is the people they know and they're connected to. Your professional network is actually, like I went to George Washington University, uh, people that have a similar university background, people that are, I was in the Navy, people that have been in the Navy, or even other people in the military. So if I reach out to someone who's working in a similar field as me, and they're in the military, they'll actually talk to me because we both shared we're in the military. Same with athletics, same with hobbies. So these are people like me. That's what I call it. PLM, people like me. And you can connect to those people and a, a strong percentage of them will connect back with you. And a strong percentage of those will actually want to talk to you or email with you or talk to you via messaging. So that is the best way to find work is having plenty of groups, local, regional, national groups that are industry specific, sub-industry specific or skills 
You know, you're an accountant, you're an auditor, you're uh, a security person, you have your security certifications, professional organizations, uh, people that do government pr uh, program management that construct do government construction. There's so many different groups and a lot of them are spread throughout the U.S. So you can work, work. A lot of times you can contact someone on the West Coast. They will know of opportunities on the East Coast. But it's critical to use LinkedIn. And when you're using it, it means you need to go on it every week or every two or three days. So if someone responds to you, then you'll actually see it. So some people have it on their phone. I use it so much, I actually don't have it on my phone. I use it with on my computers. And uh, I just get too many messages on my phone. So I just removed it from my phone. But most people don't get the number of messages I get. And they should actually have it on their phones. It's, uh, again, by far the best way to find a job. I'm trying to think any do's and don'ts. I always think of uh, just responding quickly and with a good attitude, not assuming the worst there's like every platform there's trolls there's fake people it's pretty pretty ai isn't good enough yet so that you can't tell who it is so most of the time i can figure out if it's if the person's real or not um but i mean there's like the groups you can join can be like local groups like i joined a lot of washington dc consultant groups because i have worked with a lot of consultants in dc and professional organizations. The thing about uh, looking for work on LinkedIn, <clears throat> a lot of people, when I'm talking to them, they have a great background. They're strong professionals. They have, they come from good backgrounds, good schools, who have worked hard, done well. And they assume that they can just apply for the job and get the job and it just doesn't work. Then they get all depressed. They get mad. They get a random interview every now and then. Now, if they just stopped and had their LinkedIn strong and they just communicated with, say, 40 or 50 people a week, it'd be real easy to do that. That would be less at half an hour to 45 minutes. And just started to talk to people in the industry, in their field, people with similar backgrounds to them, people with similar hobbies as them. They would get a real good feel on what's out there, what's available, where the opportunities are, what companies are good, just by having two or three conversations a week. And it can be messaging also. So that's really, I'm not about uh, people getting a job. Most people can get a job and then they hate it because it doesn't meet all their criteria. I'm more about getting someone a good job or even a great job where they'll want to stay a long time they work with people they like, they get compensated well, uh, it's at a level and they're respected. Uh, there's just a lot of good things about getting a great job, but it takes work. People will spend years to get an education, to do well on their job. They spend eight to 10 hours every day doing great on their job and they will spend almost no time preparing to look for work and to be able to interview well or even to negotiate like people want to read about it but they don't want to learn about it and actually adopt best practices so that they can get a great job so i'm not like haranguing you i'm more just encouraging you to be active on linkedin uh, one of the stats says 80 percent of the recruiters use linkedin specifically to find candidates for a job that's probably even higher than that. Everybody I know is a recruiter, uh, has LinkedIn recruiter or uses LinkedIn actively. And 94%, and I would say it's almost even higher, of the recruiters and, and the hiring managers vet people out by looking at their LinkedIn. So really having a, a great LinkedIn profile, a good picture, a good background, more than 500 connections, uh, a, a, a LinkedIn profile that looks like your resume, good group connections, some level of activity. That's what hiring managers and decision makers are looking at today.
It's, it makes it real easy, but everybody is doing it. So that's kind of my, uh, that's my thought on LinkedIn. I'm uh, actually teaching a course on it to uh, bookkeepers. A bunch of bookkeepers came to me. My sister is a part of a national organization. I'm going to teach them how to use LinkedIn to do well with it and actually how to uh, build up their connections and build up their clients by using LinkedIn. So uh, I, I think it's a great platform. A lot of people, uh, like I said, a lot of people avoid it. But by doing a little bit of work, even if you do it every other week, you'll be ready if you've got to change or look for work or you want to learn something from somebody else, another subject matter expert. You have a, I don't know how many million, I, I wrote it down at one point, how many professionals are in the U.S., but totally they're almost at a trillion worldwide and the majority are outside the U.S., but we're still at two or 300 million, I think, uh, within the U.S., so that's my thought on LinkedIn today. I uh, hope it made sense and it was clear. Feel free to send me messages. My email's there. Um, actually, I thought it was my email, but it just says bobjonescoaching.com. But you get, my email is bob at bobjonescoaching.com. I, I want to talk about people I talked to this week. Uh, one, one person specifically, I haven't had this. I actually never have had this happen to me since I've... I've talked to, I've probably talked to, I don't know, a lot of people during the week about work and about getting jobs. And this was the first time this occurred. And uh, so I thought I'd talk about it. So a gentleman reached out to me and he had been, he has a high clearance uh, that, and a, a government. So he's a government employee with a clearance, which is hard to do. Federal government employee has a high clearance actually. And he had worked in a technical area on and off for the last 15 years. And he had sent me my, his resume before we talked. And I looked it over and it looked, I was really surprised by it. I looked at it and I saw he had only short engagements for like the last 15 years. And it got worse in the last couple of years. So I said, well, this guy must be a, not very good it's got an attitude problem or something. And, but I still, I did the call with him and I realized, wow, this is a great guy and he's got a great attitude and he's smart, but he has problems taking exams and all these companies hiring these technical people want certifications and he's a bad exam taker. So he had, hadn't been able to pass the exams because of that, and because he didn't, he wasn't in a, in a place long enough, he didn't have coverage above. You need a manager or a boss that is taking care of you and that will help you in your position. He was in his positions too long or too short a period of time. So he didn't have anybody really caring for him on the job site. And that's a critical thing when you're working is you need to make sure you don't have fake people. I had a client I coached once who had this chief technology officer who never did anything for him. He was his mentor. It was a big company in Michigan. And he, he said he was a great mentor. And I said, I started asking him questions about him. And I said, that guy doesn't care about you. He's just checking a box that he's a mentor. Uh, you need to, leave him and go find another opportunity somewhere. And he did, and he did very well. Uh, but when you're working, you need to make sure you're, you're good with your boss or your, your, your direct boss. If it's a small company or your manager, if you're in a larger company, you need to, and my rule on uh, working for someone, you need to know the five things your boss wants you to do. You need to know the five things your boss doesn't want you to do. You need to know the five things you need to do for your job every day and do them well. And then you need, if once you do that, and I wouldn't ask them, you got to figure that out. You don't go to someone and ask them these things. You figure this stuff out. Then you actually find the stuff they like. So I work for a, a, a gentleman or a woman once, and she was very short. And she wanted answers quick. 
and no drama. She had five young boys uh, under the age of 12 that she was taking care of. Meanwhile, managing, we had like 30 or 40 people she managed. So she appreciated, appreciated me taking work from her, asking her about her boys and her family and the sports they were in. She appreciated that. And she appreciated me keeping my answers short and responding very quickly to her in the mode that she communicated with me. So she texted me, I texted her. She called, I called. She emailed, I emailed. And so it was a actually a great relationship. So. So this uh, gentleman I was talking about, so he had no coverage, even though he had a government clearance and he was a technical guy, he couldn't hold the job. He said to me, well, I've been trying to get another job within the clearance space. And, I, and he was talking about pretty much anything, just something that paid 40 to $60,000 is very low in the area he lives. But I said, well, He'd been in, unemployed for probably more than five or six months. And I said, just go get a job anywhere. Just go make some money. At least you're busy. He was a smart guy. He was just a very nice gentleman, smart, engaging, uh, communicated well. I said, he says, well, I've been trying to get clearance jobs. I said, why there? And he goes, well, it pays better. I said, it doesn't pay better. Most Clear jobs do not pay better than industry jobs. They pay about the same. There's very specific jobs that do pay better. Usually at the highest clearance levels are very specific things. But for the most, most part, industry-related jobs pay around the same. And the nice thing about commercial jobs are that they don't have contracts. They, a lot of the, unless you're with a very large company, one of the bigger five or six defense contractors, you're going to have to be a part of winning and losing contracts every three to five years. And you can get let go at the, at the drop of a hat. They'll just end the contract. So I'm not a fatalist or saying these things to make people worry, but clearance is not always the, the best ticket to get, even in your town where there's a lot of like the DC area where there's a lot of uh, cleared people. My, my last thought was a kind of a prevalent thought from talking to people this week is there's a common element, and I, I did mention it earlier, of people that are very good at their job and what they're doing. And they get a kind of a bit of an attitude about finding a job and kind of mad and bitter and some of most of them are employed. Some of them are, are in between jobs, and I look at it as an adventure. Uh, I'd say embrace it. Embrace this area, step of your uh, stage of your life that's slightly uncomfortable. But the thing that doesn't work is if you don't look to use best practices. If you just apply, so many uh, I've talked to regularly to people that all they do is apply. That's their, you know, the modus operandi. That's the way they default to. And it doesn't work. And that's what I said to these this gentleman that couldn't get a job in the security area with an analyst. I said, it doesn't work. Why are you still doing it if it doesn't work? You've been doing it for months and months and months and months. Very few interviews. Nobody hired them. I said, go do something else. What are your other interests? What did you do beyond this? So he actually is now, he's going to call me back in a couple of weeks. He's going to look at other opportunities where he's been asked to work just outside of the technical area, outside of the government. And this is the first time I've talked to someone that I really don't believe can get a job in the government right now. The government wants you to have the certifications and He's a little bit older, so he's not going to be, a lot of these, the tech jobs he was looking at are being filled by younger people because they're, they're all certified and they have a couple of years experience and it's, they're not going to hire someone that doesn't have the certification. So first person I've ever recommended not to get a job in one area, I actually it was kind of monumental. So that's kind of what I've got for today. I don't, uh, I've talked to a lot of people this week. It's been really good. I would encourage you to have a good attitude, learn best practices, and just do a little bit every day. And 
realize there's a great job out there for you. Know what you're looking for. I I will have, um, I'm not sure what my next topic will be. Number five, lucky number five will be next, next week. I look forward to hearing comments and critiques. I was instructed to slow down. I was reading off the page too much and going too fast. Hopefully this is a little clearer. I look forward to uh, engaging next week. I hope you all have a great week. Take care.